Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking at questions from the commenters on our channel. You know, we really like questions over here at Herman's Academy because it gives us food for thought. And some of you guys ask really good questions that makes us have to think a lot, do a lot of Bible research, a lot of studying in order to answer those questions, but that's good. That's what we call sharpening the sword. So keep the questions coming. In this video, we're going to answer a few of these questions the best we can. Now, the first question is from Tony Lopez. He writes, what is the Third Testament and where do you get this from? We used to get this question a lot, but then we started adding a link to the Third Testament to our description and reminding people that it's there in just about every video that we put out. So most people hear that and go down and check out the Third Testament of the Bible, so we don't get this question as much. But it's still a very important question. The Third Testament is the third part of the trilogy that we know as the Bible. We got the first part way back in about 14 or 1500 BC by way of Moses. It taught us the law. But as we evolved spiritually, we got the second testament by way of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Talking about the Gospels. That's what it taught us love. But there again, some spiritual evolution had to take place over about 1800 years is when we got the third testament of the Bible by way of a lady named Damiano Aviedo. The Third Testament was given to her through the Elijah spirit in about 1884. And the Third Testament is where we learn spiritualization. In other words, we learn to be spiritual beings. The Third Testament of the Bible is necessary in order to understand a lot of things that we were taught in the First Testament and in the Second Testament. It clears up a lot of misunderstandings and makes a lot of things make sense. So again, check in the description for a link to the Third Testament of the Bible. There's both an audio book that you can listen to on YouTube and a PDF that you can download to your device. There are hard copies available, but they're extremely difficult to find. And before I found one, I was strongly considering having the Third Testament printed out. I don't know how much it costs to print a 600 page book at Kinko's but believe me, it would be well worth it. Thanks again for the question. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, the next question comes from Hyper Genius. Where is a good place to get a copy of the Apocalypse of Elijah? Now, I got mine from eBay, but you can find them just searching around on the web for the Apocalypse of Elijah. There's also PDFs of it that you can download to your computer if you want a digital copy. I like to have hardcover copies of all of my books because I know one day the power is going to go out and I'm not going to have access to digital copies. That's probably why Hyper Genius is trying to get a hard copy for himself. It doesn't take a genius to know that paperback is better. Thanks for the question. The next question comes from Chosen One American Indian. He says, didn't the Creator say we are not to celebrate the feast because we're not back in our land and the land has not returned to divine order? Aren't we to wait for that to occur? The answer is no. When you read the scripture, we're never told that there was a requirement to keep the feast at the temple. In fact, when you look at the first times Passover was kept, the temple wasn't even created yet. There wasn't even a tabernacle that they celebrated the feast days in. You can read about all of the feasts over in Leviticus 23. That's the only place where all of the feasts are listed in one chapter. Never does it tell you that you had to go to Jerusalem to do it. And even when you jump over in the books of Isaiah and some of the other prophets where the scripture seems to imply 
that the Father is not pleased with our feasts, it was because of vanity and how the religious leaders of the time were focusing more on the religious ceremonies instead of true worship. So I would say we are in error to wait for the times to do the feasts. By not keeping the feasts, many understand that that actually gives you the mark of the beast. Being that keeping the feasts gives you the mark of the Father, it is my understanding that we were never supposed to stop keeping the feasts. But this is a very important question. Thank you for asking. The next question comes from Alan Nehru. I know I didn't pronounce that right, but I tried. He says, could you also look at the issue of what God said when he declared somewhere in the Bible, see, I make all things new. There will be new heavens and new earths. Maybe the old earth wasn't large enough to cater for the very, very tall building like those to be found in New Jerusalem. What he's talking about is the third temple. But we understand that the third temple is spiritual in nature. And if you take it literally, if you look at the measurements of it and take it literally, you'll find that it won't even fit on the earth. It's too big. So just like everything else in the book of Revelations, we have to look for the spiritual meaning of a lot of it. Now, not all of it is allegory. A lot of the events described in Revelations is literal. But when he's talking about the third temple, New Jerusalem, yeah, that's all spiritual. From what I understand, the old Jerusalem is going away by way of an earthquake or a nuclear bomb or something like that. He also asks, and the Lord goes on to say, I shall roll up the heavens like a piece of cloth. Wouldn't that be the black holes we see in space right now? Are they not rolling up matter, planets, stars, and sending them back into the invisible realm, back to nothingness? From what we understand about black holes, sure that's what's going on. But again, we have to look at the spiritual nature of this question. And many times when the Bible is talking about heavens, he's not talking about a place up in the sky. But he's talking about our consciousness. For instance, when it uses the word cloud, he's talking about the consciousness cloud. Now, I can't say I understand fully what Revelation says when it says the heavens will be rolled away like a piece of cloth. It could be literal. If it is literal, I am more inclined to think it's talking about a mushroom cloud from a nuclear blast or something like that. I guess that's one we'll have to wait and see. Thanks, Alan. The next question comes from Next to Forever Ministries. He says, what book are you reading from? Chances are, if you don't know the book that I'm reading from, it's probably the Third Testament of the Bible. I have a large collection of books in my library, but that's the only one that's actually new. Most of them were written before the birth of Christ. And even the ones that were not, were written over 1500 years ago. But the Third Testament of the Bible was written, like we said before, in 1884. The thing about the Third Testament of the Bible is being oppressed by many of our ministers. In other words, a lot of the ministers know about it, but they're not really telling us about it. That shouldn't be surprising. You remember they never told us about the lost books of the Bible or the forgotten books of Eden. They never even told us about the Apocrypha, and a lot of us have those books in our Bibles when we go to church. But the Third Testament of the Bible presents them with additional problems. It shines light on many of the errors common in our church today. Like for instance, who put those guys in charge in the first place? And why are they telling us not to keep the law? Because they're not really prepared to answer those questions, they don't really want us to start asking them in the first place. So they don't bother to tell us about the Third Testament of the Bible at all. But over here at Hermas Academy, we were sure to be the first to teach classes on the Third Testament of the Bible. 
When I first discovered it, one of the first thing I did was went on YouTube and see if had anybody taught any classes out of it. And when I couldn't find one, I put up my own class. It's pretty rough, but I was the first. Thanks for the question. The next question comes from Christina Cotton. Do you think Google is going to try to help anybody keep the Passover and give you a correct date? She's referring to one of the many classes we do when it comes to the feast days. Going all the way back to when I first discovered the feast days there in the book of Leviticus, I have been checking the dates on them every year. For some reason, going back to my early days in the faith, I have always believed that the dates given for the Passover were always incorrect. So I've always taken the time to look them up for myself. I use the calendar as kind of a starting point, but then I go to verify the exact date of the feast days based on the sighting of the new moon. And when I do my classes on the feast days, I'll often pull up what Google says about the date of the feast because that's usually what's on the calendar. The Gregorian calendars on our wall, they usually match with what Google says. So to answer the question, do I think Google is trying to help us to get it right? No. I think they're just stating what they were told. They're getting their information from somebody else. Sanhedrin or some other Jewish organization that comes up with the dates. But I believe we all should be verifying the exact date for ourselves based on the sighting of the new moon. Thanks for the question. The next question comes from Jigo Fit. He says, what if you don't have unleavened bread because they're sold out? I think at the time he asked this question, a lot of the stores were reporting having sold out of a lot of stuff because of the pandemic that we're in. Thing about it, they never had unleavened bread in the first place. At least down at my local Walmart, I've looked at just about every bakery item in the store, including saltine crackers, and they all have some form of leaven in it, whether it be yeast or baking soda or baking powder. When it comes to unleavened bread, you usually have to make your own. Thanks, Jago. We're going to call that episode one of our question and answering session. We don't want to make these videos too long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But as you can see, I've only made it up to about 13 minutes, but I have over an hour of questions left. So if you haven't seen your question yet, it's probably in here somewhere. If you haven't asked your question yet, go ahead and do so in the comment section. Again, we really like questions here at Hermes Academy. Not only do they help us out, make us dig in the books to find out what the truth is, but a lot of times the questions that you're having, others are having them too. But sometimes they don't get around to it or maybe they even don't have the courage to ask them. So please keep the questions coming. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button if you haven't done so already. So you can see your questions answered in future Q&A episodes. May our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.